I'm recording our Bible study lesson this morning in the sanctuary of the church where God's given me the honor of preaching revival this week. Obviously, it is a mural at the front of their sanctuary. Obviously, it pictures, depicts the cross, the old rugged cross where our Savior died. I, I could think of no other background any more suitable than this for today's lesson. John chapter 6, beginning at verse number 60. Let me get you caught up. Our Lord has just made a shocking statement. I think the crowd is understanding it literally and Jesus means it spiritually. But nonetheless, here's what he said. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll never be saved. And I know I'm paraphrasing, but that's the, you'll never be saved. That statement that statement, they're going to call it in our first verse a hard statement, a hard saying. That statement offended many of Jesus' followers. Verse 60. Many, therefore, of his disciples. I'm astounded by that. His disciples, mathetes is the Greek word. His followers, his pupils, his students, many, not the twelve. Well, Judas, but not the twelve. Many of his disciples, when they heard that saying, eat my flesh, drink my blood, or they heard the Lord say repeatedly, I've come down from heaven. I am God. When they heard this, they said, this is a hard saying. And, and, and hard there, uh, 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 the Greek word is skleros, S-K-L-E-R-O-S, but in context, Hard to understand. Hard to comprehend. Going to be awfully hard to explain that to anybody. Eat his flesh, drink his blood. He's God come down from heaven. And uh, who can hear it? And, and the word there, when he says who can hear it, who can hear, listen attentively, and obey it? Who can eat his flesh? Who can drink his blood? That's what they're asking. Verse 61. When the, Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, that they murmured at it, synonym, that they grumbled at it. By the way, here's another illustration. John chapter 6, verse number 61, where Jesus knows everything. Where Jesus is the omniscient Son of God. He knew in himself that they were murmuring. They didn't murmur to his face. They murmured among themselves. Murmur, grumbling, complaining, dissatisfied, an old bad spirit. Jesus said unto them, point blank, does this offend you? Does this offend you? Oh boy, let me give you the word offend. Scandalizo. I had best spell it. S-K-A-N-D-I-L-I-Z-O. Scandalizo. Look at it if you've written it down. It is our English word scandalize. Or the noun scandal. You fellows, you think this is going to be a scandal? Does this offend you? A scandal. In, in Greek, the word meant a trap. Uh, here, here's a better, a better definition. A stumbling block. You're going to stumble and miss eternal life because I said you've got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And what Jesus meant by that, eating flesh and drinking blood, he meant nothing other than receiving Jesus as your Savior. He meant nothing other than believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, accepting Him. Here's a good word, eat my flesh, drink my blood. 
internalizing him. And boy, didn't that happen. The Holy Ghost moved in my life, my body, the instant that I asked Jesus to save me. Does this offend you? Um, let's go to the next verse. We're working some vocabulary and I'm trying to explain the essence of the text. What and if, Jesus is still talking, asking a question. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man, that's Jesus, his favorite, he self-identifies as the Son of Man. When he's speaking of the Son of God, emphasizes his deity. When he's speaking of the Son of Man, it emphasizes his humanity. He is both God and man, 100% God, 100% man. What, and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend, going up, ascend up where he was before. Wow. Let me tell you what I think Jesus just said. If you're upset because I said I came down from heaven, that would have reference to the incarnation. That would have reference to the virgin birth of our Savior. If you're offended that I said I came down from heaven, what in the world are you going to say? How will you react when you see me go back up unto heaven after the death, burial, and resurrection, 40 days after his resurrection, when I ascend literally bodily back to heaven, back to the right hand of my Father, what and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up to where He was before. He was in heaven. God the Son came to earth, took on a human body, and then after death, after A plus on His Calvary report card, after shedding His blood so we sinners can be saved. He'll ascend back. He did. He ascended back to the presence of God. If one thing offends you about me, Oh my, Jesus is the Son of God. He can do everything. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. Uh, he, he is omnipotent. We need to ex accept and trust and believe Jesus is God. Verse 63, the Lord continues to teach. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. And, and the word there for spirit, pneuma, it is the word in the New Testament for the Holy Ghost of God, the Holy Spirit. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Now that's an interesting, quickeneth. Makes me born again. Regenerates me. Uh, that verb quickeneth, it's a blend of two words. Zoon, which is zoe, z-o-e, it's the word for life. And poeo, it's the Holy Ghost that performs life in you. That builds and puts life in you. The day I got saved, the Holy Ghost, through the blood of Jesus, gave me everlasting, eternal life. <laughs> it is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, the words that I speak unto you, and here, the words, it's not logos, L-O-G-O-S, it's rhema, R-H-E-M-A, and it means the specific words. Not everything Jesus said in one big gulp, the specific verses, the individual lines, every verb, every noun, uh, eat my blood, eat, eat my flesh, eat my body, uh, drink my blood, uh, and... Uh, and uh, every word, every word that I've spoken, they are life. Let me read that last line of verse uh, 63 again. Let me read the whole verse. It's the Holy Ghost that quickens. And the flesh profiteth nothing. You fellas, you're, you're understanding everything in the flesh. That won't work. You're going to have to understand these things through the Spirit. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. Oh boy, let's stop there a minute. God the Father, 
Jesus is going to say something about him in a second. God the Son, and now the Spirit, God the Holy Ghost. The Trinity, the Godhead, works in harmony, works uh, in unity, bringing about our salvation. And that's what Jesus is saying. In conjunction with the Word of the living God. God the Father. God the Fa Let's talk about God the Father just a second. I can't spend long here. God the Father. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman in John 4, God is spirit. Let's just take a second. God and the Holy Ghost, same. Jesus one day said, I and my Father are one. The Holy Ghost could also say, I and my Father are one. God is spirit. That's one of those uh, beautiful sentences. You can, the spirit, the Holy Spirit is God. Peter said that when Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Ghost that day in the church when they brought their offering and weren't, they weren't truthful about their offering. God is God the Father links with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is God. Now look what Jesus just said. And the words that I speak, the words that I speak in this book, in this Bible, and the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Now Jesus just equated his words with the Holy Ghost. All the way through Jesus' ministry, he brags on the Holy Ghost, uplifts the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm going to send him. Uh, he's great, but I can't send him till I go back to my Father. He's the spirit of truth. He'll guide you. He'll teach you. He'll convict you. Uh, he'll, he'll encourage you along the way. All these say, Jesus... God the Father brags on His Son. The Son brags on the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost reflects that honor back to Jesus and back to God the Father. The words I speak unto you. It's not that you're going to have to take a bite of my literal flesh. My words of spirit. My words, if you eat my, if you eat my flesh in the spirit, God save my wretched soul. Ah, then you'll get born again. Then the Holy Ghost will convict you. Verse 64. Verse 64. Jesus said, now there's some of you, there's some of you that believe not. There's some of you that believe not. Is it possible to say you're a disciple and then in the final analysis find out you never really got saved? You never really believe. Let Brother Bagwell answer that. Yes, it's possible. James in his short little epistle said there are some people, they think they're saved, who have deceived themselves. Devil somehow slipped them a counterfeit. There's some of you that believe not. They may have seen him turn water into wine. They may have seen him walk on the sea. Uh, they may have seen him heal the lame man, the impotent man at the pool of, Beth uh, of Bethesda. Uh, but, uh, but though they say, some of you believe not. Some of you believe not. Uh, I want to get ook. Believe not. That is the strongest adverb of negativity in that you believe not. You've just never been saved. For Jesus knew his omniscience again. Omni, skio, it's Latin. Skio means I know, gives us the word science. Sort of sad to say in the day of apostate science. Uh, skio means I know and omni means all omniscience. Jesus knows all he knew from the beginning who they were. Probably from the beginning of their profession of faith, he knew who they were that believed not. And he also knew who would betray him. Even among his disciples, there is one who will sell him out, who will turn his back on him, who will, who will rush Jesus' death on the cross 
of Calvary. And Jesus already knows. Oh, could I make an announcement class? And I'm doing this because I love you. He knows if you're saved. Brother Bagel, let's turn that back. He knows if, sir, if you're saved. He knows our hearts. He knows who has and has not believed. Verse 65. And Jesus said, Therefore I say unto you, here comes the Father into our discussion, into this sermon. Uh, a lot of the commentaries call this paragraph an after meeting. An after meeting. After feeding the multitudes, that's early John 6. And then the great elongated sermon on the bread of life, that's the middle of John 6. Now at the end, an after meeting with his disciples. Some of you believe. Some of you don't believe. No, verse 65, Therefore said I unto you, No man, no man can come unto me except it were given him of my Father. You can't be saved unless it is given you of the Father. But now we have to balance that. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We've got to go back to Isaiah 53 again. Where, where it says on the cross, Jesus will see his seed. He will see those who are going to be saved. Going to be, he, I, believe he, I believe when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. If you're saved, I believe you were on his mind. Uh, he look, said, God will give you the seed. God will give you a body. God will give you a bride. God's gift. The church is God's gift to the Lord Jesus. I believe that's what it means. Let me, let me read it to you again. No man can come unto me except it were given him of my Father. And God gave Jesus, O rugged cross, God gave Jesus the church. Here's your body. Here's your bride. I give it to you. And then how do I get into that gift? How do I become part of this great program of eternal life? How, how do believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt whosoever shall call on the Lord Jesus believe in your heart God raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved God gave Jesus a gift collectively corporately and individuals get into that body by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus and no man can come unless it's given him of my Father. But now I've got some good news for you as a sinner. You say, oh my, am I, uh, did Jesus die for me? Is His blood shed for me? On the authority of God's Word, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God commands every man everywhere to repent. By the way, God wouldn't command you to repent if you couldn't repent. That would make God hypocritical and our God is no hypocrite. Hey, come on. Yes, if you believe, if you trust, if the Spirit of God is stirring your heart, putting you under, you can believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You are the Father. You're getting in the church the Father's gift to His Son. Verse 66. Verse 66. And from that time, and from that time, many, many of his disciples went back. Let me give you that verb, went back. Apo, it means away from, in that direction, apo, and erkamai. Erkamai can mean come or go. Erkamai, apo, erkamai, they did not come toward him. They now turn and go away from him. They no longer want to be counted as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more. That verb walked is peripateo. P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-O. I'm sure it is. P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-O. And it means to walk around, to plan your life around, to spend day in and day out with the Savior. They said, no, we're through. 
We will no longer walk with him. A commentator, a Bible teacher, a good preacher in his own right said this, and I agree with him. Said verse 66 is one of the saddest verses. One of the saddest verses in all the New Testament. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Preacher, were they ever saved? Here's my answer. They never were saved. Philippians chapter 1, verse 5, 6, right along in there. If you're saved, God's begun a good work in you. And here's the way our King James Bible puts it. This is the way Paul wrote it. God that has begun a good work in you will perform it. He won't quit. He'll perform it till Jesus comes again, till the day of Jesus Christ. If you're saved, if you're saved, you cannot permanently walk away from Him. God will whip you. God will take you to heaven if you're stubborn and persistent. But He'll never, I don't believe He'll ever wipe your name out of the book of life. Many of His disciples went back and walked. They got offended. That, you know, preacher, I'll never get offended. Well, that's funny. I mean, that's not funny, but uh, John the Baptist got offended one day. He was in jail. Couldn't make disciples any longer. He's in jail because he preached the truth to an ungodly king, but he's in jail. They're going to kill him. They're going to decap it. They're going to cut his head off, and uh, I'm sure he knows it's coming. His days are numbered, and he sent a group of his men. Jesus are you the one or should we start looking for another? He was discouraged. He was offended in the Lord Jesus. Jesus said, you boys go back to John the Baptist. Tell him what you've seen today. Uh, 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 sick people have been made well. Uh, the Word of God has been preached. Poor people have been loved into the kingdom of God. And, and you tell him I am the Son of God. And tell him blessed is anybody who's not offended to me. John the Baptist got offended. John the Baptist can get offended. By the way, he got it all worked out. You can be sure I could be offended. You could be offended. Let's not be offended at our Savior. Verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away, you fellows? The twelve. That's the first time in the Gospel of John. Surprising, but I checked it. That's the first time in the Gospel of John the term the twelve is used. Uh, Jesus said unto the twelve, the twelve disciples, Will ye also go away? Will you also go away? Now that word go away, the Holy Spirit picks a different verb. Hupo ago. Ago means to lead or passively to be led. And hupo means down. If these men, they have been saved, all except Judas. If these men, uh, if they go away, they're being led down. They're making a terrible move. Everybody does, but these men especially. Then Simon Peter answered, thank God for him. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord... He sure called Jesus by the right name. Kurios, K-U-R-I-O-S is the Greek. Uh, it doesn't mean sir. It doesn't mean simply master. It means this. It's, the, uh, it's a name the ancient Jews began to use for Almighty God because they didn't want to use, would not use His name Jehovah. He just said God, Lord, Oh my, Jesus, we know who you are. Uh, Lord, to whom shall we go? Where would we go? Nobody else has got the answer. Nobody else has the key to eternal life. To whom shall we go? <laughs> to, uh, will, will you go away? To whom shall we go? Listen to Peter. Get ready with an amen. For thou hast the words of Eternal life. Has is the verb echo. You're holding on to them. You've grasped them. You've got a hold of the words of eternal life. And that's some words of eternal life. And uh, I, I want to, yes, words, rhema, R H E M A again, rhema again. The exact verb, the exact noun, the exact phrase, the exact, thou hast the words of eternal 
eternal life. That's what Jesus just said. My words go out and the Holy Ghost empowers them and my words will give you, you'll trust, you'll believe, will give you everlasting eternal life. To whom shall we go? My Lord, you're the one. You're the only one. He said, I am the way. <laughs> no man comes to the Father but by me. You're the only one who has the words of Aren't you glad you came to Jesus one day? Aren't you glad you trusted Him as your Savior? And well, Peter's not through. Look at verse 69. And we believe and we're sure that Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Boy, that nails it down. That makes it dogmatic. Uh, two verbs here I want to notice real quick. With we believe and we're sure. Now the world says, I'm sure of it, I've proved it, and now I'm going to believe it. Faith doesn't say, we believe, number one, and then we're sure. You say, preacher, I, 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 I'm not sure of my salvation. You've got to believe. Do you believe what he said? You're a sinner going to hell. If you'll ask me, I'll save you. Believe on the Lord. If you'll believe right, then you'll be sure. He'll give you. He'll give you that assurance. We believe and we're sure that you're the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're the answer to the Jewish problem. You're the answer to the Gentile problem. You're the answer to the sinner problem. Uh, 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 you're the Christ, comma, the Son. <laughs> the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. That is a great statement of and confession of faith. In this last little bit, the disciples are discussed. We get a positive confession and a terrible, terrible bit of news. Jesus answered, verse 70. I've got to hurry, verse 70. Have not I chosen you twelve? The Gospel of John does not give us the official choosing of the twelve as the synoptic Gospels do. Jesus gets them one at a time. Remember chapter 1? John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus. How can you say, Behold the Lamb of God? And then in jail, or do we look for another? It's because we're weak. It's because we're human. John the Baptist sent some of his disciples, Andrew, to the Lord, for example, to the Lord Jesus. Have I not? John doesn't tell that like the synoptics. Uh, Jesus prays all night in the synoptics and then chooses 12 that they might be with Him. If you're His disciple, you want to hang around with Him and uh, that they might preach the Word of God. Verse 70, Have I not chosen you 12 and one of you? It's Judas. And one of you is a devil. One of you has got the devil in him. One of you has never been saved. Verse 71, He spake of Judas. Judas is carried. Is carried. It's probably the city where he is reared, like Mary Magdalene. She grew up at Magdala. Judas is carried, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray the Lord. Predicted, prophesied in Psalm 41, he's the one that should betray the Lord, being one of the twelve. And no, Judas is not saved. He's got a devil in him. John later adds, he's a thief. He stole from the little uh, uh, offering chest that, uh, that the uh, disciples had. Elsewhere, Paul calls him the son of perdition. And uh, he's the, uh, he is a worker of iniquity. Yeah, Judas not said. In this text of Scripture, in this passage, what did one, one preacher, that, that I, I, I try to study a, a number of preachers, he called it the great defection, the great departure. People departed from the Lord at the end of John 6. They pretty well will do the same at the end of John 12. And uh, I think it's a sign of the last days that we are living right now. There will be many others who will depart from the faith, giving heed to doctrines of devils. It's happening. It's happening as I stand here on this platform by this pulpit, preaching to you the good word of God. Eat my flesh, drink my blood, and I'll save you. That's what got him upset. And all Jesus meant 
believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt believe on the Lord and thou shalt be saved.